All right, welcome back to Open, everybody. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee from WBLS. Our first guest is Research Coordinator for CUNY's Institute for Health Equity. And today, she'll tell us more about helping underprivileged uh, communities with the high statistics of illnesses. Um, please welcome Johansa Fernandez. We welcome you to the show. Hi, how are you? <laughs> well, nice to see you. Now, you're doing a lot of wonderful things. Tell us about the, the, a little bit about the organization before we start. So we're the CUNY Institute for Health Equity, and mm -hmm. although we are housed at Lehman, we are a CUNY-wide institute. Yep. And what we do is we offer volunteer internship opportunities to students in particular, but we also mm -hmm. have a lot of community-based um, or capacity building um, things going on. And mm -hmm. so one of those things that we have going on now is the infant mortality study in the South Bronx. So as you may or may not know, the South Bronx has the mm. highest rate of infant mortality in the entire United States. Wow. And yeah. our goal is to figure out <clears throat> what exactly it is that is affecting these, these rates of infant mortality and yeah. why is it that it's higher within the South Bronx. Is it diet? What, what, what is it? We are unclear as to what it is. However, the South Bronx has an influx of intervention mm -hmm. programs, just anything that may be targeted towards mm -hmm. infant mortality. However, they've, they've been unsuccessful in lowering that rate. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, wait a minute. Now, how long ha has you, have you been working on this? Uh, well, we just recently began. So, I'd say maybe about six or seven months. Mm. Right. Okay. So, it's been something that's been kind of on our radar, mm -hmm. but now we're really aiming to so really target it. When will the studies uh, be completed? We are, we are trying to recruit about a thousand women. So, as soon as we recruit that that thousand women, mm -hmm. then we hope that then to start doing data analysis and things of that nature. Okay. So, uh, a thousand pregnant women or okay, so women who have had children already? Right. So, women who have had children already. So, mm -hmm. these women should have been 18 or older at the time of birth and their child should be between zero and 24 months once they have the screener done. And yeah, that yeah. is just to deem eligibility. Yeah. Wonder what it is. I mean, they talk about that a lot here in the, in the, in the Bronx. Right. Infant mortality. Mm -hmm. um, well, in a lot of places throughout the five boroughs, but more so here in the Bronx. Right. So the, the South Bronx actually has a higher rate of infant mortality and adverse birth outcomes than the entire city of New York. Mm -hmm. um, and they have the highest rate of the nation in total. Wow. And so our aim is to figure out exactly what it is. Is it diet? Is it that you, there's a food desert that you don't have access to, to fresh fruits and vegetables? Is it safety in the community? Is it the relationships that you had or something that occurred yeah. while you were pregnant that may have affected that? Wow. And it, well, there's a lot of things in the South Bronx. You have that uh, the plant over there that uh, yes. I think it cleans the right. the water, and that that uh, that's you know, interesting. Let, it emits, it right. emits a lot of uh, pollution. Do right. you think maybe that can be? I I, the I cause can't of it? say that that is the cause of it. However, just to kind of piggyback off of what you said, there's uh, the South Bronx also has the the highest density of um, crisscrossing um, expressways, highways, etc. So. Imagine all the pollution of all those cars uh, while yeah. you're pregnant. Yeah. It, it may, it, I think it's just kind of a whole host of things. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to figure out a well-rounded approach to what exactly is it that's going on. And are we getting the foods that we need in right. the South Bronx? Right. You right. know, a lot of people complain about the bodegas. They don't have all the healthy, nutritious foods that, right. that we need. Right. And how far yeah. is it for you to, to, for you to purchase nutritious mm -hmm. foods? Yeah. Is it too far of a distance for you to walk? Is it somewhere that you wouldn't walk because it's unsafe? So I think we're looking at a whole host of things. And, and in that, we also did a, an environmental audit. And by that, what we did is have some of our researchers go out and actually look at the different WIC offices, which offer support to pregnant women and to women that have had children. Mm. And are they accessible? Was there graffiti in the street? So this is looking at everything in the environment in graffiti, the South Bronx. Graffiti, what, what does that have to do with that? So it's, it's just a matter of would, would a woman have a better... Um, a better birth outcome if she lived in an area that didn't have broken glass on the street, which is something we looked at, didn't have graffiti on the walls. Would that, would that differ, mm -hmm. her birth outcome, versus someone that maybe lives in a suburban area that ha doesn't face any broken glass, yeah. any graffiti? So what is the difference? Does the environment play a role, or is yeah. that not a role at all? What about health? What about the diabetes and all those things that, uh, that ail a lot of people in our community? Right. I think that that also, my thought about that is that it's also within looking at the environment, also looking at your accessibility to food. So if we only have, if your closest thing is McDonald's, 
if your closest restaurant is Burger King, if it's the Ken Kennedy fried chicken, mm -hmm. how do you then figure out what do I eat that's best for my baby and yeah. myself? So I think that diabetes will also play a role. And we do ask the women if they were diagnosed with gestational diabetes or with mm. just diabetes before they Kennedy fried pregnant. chicken is pretty good, you know. I mean, not every day, but you know, every now and then you go Kennedy fried chicken and get some chicken and uh, get, you know, corn on a cob and all that mm. stuff. But no, you don't want that every day. Right, right. Yeah. You don't want that every day. And if that's something that is the only thing that's within your reach, then we have to take that into consideration. Yeah. What about uh, domestic violence? Does that come into play? Yes, it does. So we also ask um, several questions about domestic violence, and, and we also ask about incarceration. So mm -hmm. how, how is it that if, if your partner, husband, boyfriend um, has been violent against you, how does that then affect the way, the way that you care for this child and the way that, that your pregnancy unfolds? Mm -hmm. And we also look into incarceration. If your partner, boyfriend, husband went to jail while you were pregnant, W how stressful is that for you? And then how oh. does that affect your birth outcome? Stress. Wow. That's a biggie right there. Yep. Stress. Stress is a killer. Uh -uh. So that's definitely, I think that that's not having access to food again, being around a, a plant or having all of these highways nearby where uh -huh. there's so much pollution, being unsafe or feeling unsafe in your environment. Right. That all causes stress. Wow. So you, you have a team of people working with you. Yes, we do. We have... Right now, we have two um, BSW interns, which is a Bachelor of Social Work. We mm -hmm. have four research assistants, and we also have research scholars that are at the institute mm -hmm. that help us with this. What part do the social workers play? Well, the BSW, as, a, as my training, I am a social worker. Yeah. And so I oversee that they gain some clinical exposure to these women. Mm -hmm. So their, I guess their position ranges from looking for resources for these women to actually sitting down and talking to these women. And if yeah. an emotional reaction comes up, then how do you as a social worker react to that? Well, uh, another thing comes into play while I'm, while I'm sitting here thinking and talking to you. Mm -hmm. um, what about health care? Are they getting the Pro proper health care. We spoke about nutrition and all the things, the environment, the things that uh, can um, maybe disrupt a pregnancy in our mm -hmm. community. But what about health care? Are they getting the proper uh, health that they need, the health care that they need? Well, health care is also a big component of, of the survey that, that we administer to these women. And I think that especially with the ACA coming into play, if or when ACA? the a Affordable Care Act I got it. Um, coming into play, I think that Healthcare is definitely a big component of that as well. And I think that in the South Bronx, the luxury of the South Bronx, um, for lack of a better term, they have a lot of community-based mm -hmm. organizations. They have the Planned Parenthood, they have the Urban Health Plan, they have the, um, the Soundview Medical. So they have quite mm -hmm. a few um, areas that they can go, whether they are low income or not. But the, my question is, not so much healthcare, but your access to health care. So yes. do I miss my doctor's appointments because I feel unsafe? Do I decide that it may be best for me to just stay home because I heard someone was shot yesterday? So, you know, you may have that health care. But environment plays a, a right, large part. Right. So I think w our, uh, what we're trying to look at is a well-rounded approach to exactly what affects mm. or trying to figure out from these women themselves what affects. What are the demographics that we're looking at? What's the age limit there? I mean. And between what over, ages? Over, over 18. So you 18 to 65 if you had, if you had a child. There's no limit past 18. The you. only thing okay. we're looking at is that women had to have been 18 or older at the time of birth. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So I, we don't have any limits. Are you looking for volunteers? For volunteers to To help out what you're doing? To help out what we're doing. We're more than welcoming volunteers and also we're looking for participants, participants. for the study as well. Right, right. Okay. Give us some information. What okay. do we call? So if you are interested and if you think that you are eligible for the study, then we call 347-577-4008. Mm -hmm. And um, I, will, I will or one of my BSW interns will either pick up the phone and screen you right then and there and set up an interview date right then and there, or you leave a message and we get back to you within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And so these women, as long as you're 18 or older, have had a child within zero to 24 months mm -hmm. um, and have lived in the South Bronx during your pregnancy, then you are eligible for the study. There you go. Is there a website? Yes, there is. So mm -hmm. it, you can go to www.cunyhealthequity.org. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also flyers and 
you'll you should see a whole okay. host of those things. See, that was beautiful, right? <laughs> Lots of great information there. Uh, yeah. Social, not only a social worker, but research coordinator yeah. for the Community, Community Institute for Health Equity, uh, Johansa Fernandez. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. You'll come back and share more information when yes, the sir. results come out. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so much. All right.